Hey developers, today we're going to look at a really cool opinionated Vite starter template called Vitesse. Or Vitesse. Vitesse? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Anyways, it has a whole bunch of really cool components to make this a really fun starter pack, especially if you're looking to jump into Vite for the first time. And I wanted to show you guys this by actually deep diving into the starter template and trying some of the features out and letting you know how I feel about them. And if you don't know what Vite is, Vite uh, works with React, Vue, Svelte. Basically, it's kind of a way to bundle all your packages and things together. It's kind of an alternative to Webpack. So here, let's just look at everything you include in this. And this is really opinionated on the view three side of things. So this is a view three V2 starter template. So if you've been looking to get into view three, this is also another great way to do that. So first, uh, this repository, I'll put a link to it down below. Anthony Fu is actually the creator of it. He's done a ton of stuff in the view ecosystem. And instead of just going through every feature line by line right in the GitHub repo, I thought uh, it'd be more fun and more interesting if you guys just watch me go through it inside VS Code. So here is it running in VS Code right now. And you can notice right away that there's a few things that probably are interesting. I have this localhost running. So this is actually an extension that I recommend. So when you actually clone this repository down and open up in VS Code, it's gonna give you a number of extensions that it recommends for you. If you don't know, that's kind of a neat thing you can do. What you do is you have this VS Code folder and inside the folder, there's an extensions. And what'll happen is it'll VS Code will pop up saying, hey, this repository recommends you install these extensions, and then you can install them all. I went ahead and did that al already, but essentially they recommend Vite that Anthony created, uh, Volar, some internationalization plugin, Iconify, some ESLint, Windy CSS, which is kind of a Tailwind CSS meta framework, I guess you can call it. And then there's also post CSS. So one thing you may realize if you've been working in the Vue ecosystem in a, for a while is that it doesn't show Vitor. So I really see lately there's been a sort of a change where a lot of people using Vue 3, especially Vite, are using Volar, which is a different type of extension for VS Code that's really TypeScript friendly. And a lot of people are not using Vitor. I actually, when I first did this, I used Vitor first and I was getting a bunch of weird squiggly lines and errors in my files. And then when I moved over to Volar, everything is working fine. So just keep that in mind. You may want to uh, disable your Vitor extension and just have Volar installed and enabled. You don't want to have both of them enabled at the same time. So just keep that in mind. This Vite extension is kind of neat too. It basically gives you a server that you can start and stop, click builds and serves and it has it basically adds everything from the command line right in VS Code. So if that's interesting to you, you can check it out. I'm using it right here. You can see if you open up your terminal, there should be a V and you can see it just runs NPX. Uh, just basically runs an NPX V at port 4000. And then it has a built in so you can have the browser inside VS Code. I don't really like having the browser inside VS Code. So I just usually close it. But if I open up local port 4000, it comes up and uh, this is the starter template right out, out the gate. This is what you get. And you can kind of play around with it too right away. So like, what's your name? Eric. And you can see, hi Eric, it created like this dynamic route for you. I even have a back button. It has this dark mode where you can turn dark mode on or off. Uh, it has a home button. And even You can even look at the internationalization. You can see different languages. So it's kind of cool you can kind of start off with this. It even has a markdown example. But what I want to kind of do to start off with is let's see if we can create some of these things and take a look how you would do it in code. Right here, this is the folder structure. You can see the source folder here. So you have this components, layouts, pages, styles. One of the components, it has a file-based routing structure. So if you're familiar with Nuxt or Next, you kind of have the same thing there where you just have to create files and it creates the routes for you. I really like that. So let's see how that would work. So I'm gonna create it already created a high folder for me. So I'm gonna create a new f uh, folder called, I don't know, by, and then I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it eric.view. Okay, and to start off with, kind of the convention I'm seeing more and more often, I don't really love it, is to put the script tag at the top. So we'll just, uh, you know, create our script here. And it uses, first I wanna talk to you guys, it uses the new experimental setup function, which as of view 3.2 is no longer experimental. So you can add it to your apps. And the way you do that is you put in setup here inside the script tag, and then you put lang equals, well, if you want to, we're gonna use TypeScript, so I'm gonna put lang equals TS here, but script setup is the way to kind of tell view that's using this 
setup function. And it has a few advantages. I've done a few videos on it, but I'll explain a little bit right here. First, we wanna just make sure this works. So here's my template. And I'm just gonna go, uh, let's do a H3 tag here. Hello world, there's my Emmet working. And then I can also, because I'm using the setup function, I actually don't have to create a whole options or create a setup function and return things. Assume this is like a setup function within itself. So all I need to do, and I don't have to return anything, I can just do const, I don't know, first name. Let's do first name equals Eric. And then all I need to do is I can reference it inside here, first name, save it, and now it should be available. So here's my app. And if you remember, I actually had the routes by slash Eric. So if I go to, if I go so by slash Eric, here it is, it said, hello world, Eric. So I've already, in essence, created a route without having changed the routing file. I've exported variables without having to return them from a setup function or use something called the options API, which is more common in Vue 2. So that's like right there, that's a big improvement over it. So let's take a look at showing props. Once if I wanted to pass something in here to this route. Well, first I would have to create another component. So let's take a look here. I have components, a components folder here. I'm gonna create a new component called, component called, I don't know, we'll call it tester.view. Once again, I'm gonna have a script tag. I'm gonna have the setup function and uh, I'm gonna use a template here. And I'm gonna say, do an h3 tag, props received. And then I'm gonna put the props I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna call it props. Let's say last name. And now I can define this props. Last name. To do that, I need to use this this syntax. I'm gonna do props equals define props. And then I can put in what it is. It's gonna be a name type string. And then I'm gonna have something like this. So now I should be able to grab. Well, I'll put last name. Last name. You can see I'm um, also the IntelliSense is working correctly. It's auto formatting, prettier is working correctly. So now this should be able to receive a prop called last name and it should display it here. So I have this tester.view. Now I should be able to go into Eric. One really cool thing is part of the plugin system here is we can do all the components are loaded automatically. So I don't have to actually go in and define it. So I should be able to just grab in tester um, and then I should pass in last name equals, it's my last name. And let's see if it works here. Now even auto formatted it for me. So if I come back here, hello world, Eric, props received, hand chat. So cool. So it automatically imported in this component. I didn't have to import or define it inside the template or do anything like that. And it also uh, received the prop that I received. So right there, that's like two pretty cool things that we did. We were able to import a component in without even having to define it anywhere. And we we're able to pass props into it and it works as you expect it. And it had type checking too. So I don't know if you had, I don't know, let's see if this works. If I change this to a number, I think it's, well, it's going to convert it back to, well, right here, type number is not assignable to type string. So right away we have our type, we, we set the prop up as a type string and it's already notifying us that we're passing the wrong thing inside here, inside VS Code, which is really awesome. So we'll change it back to a string. And just cause this bothers me, I'm gonna change this back to hand chat. So the next thing to do um, is to maybe show how we can do some internationalization in here. Very, very neat. So this one we do have to import in. So we're gonna import in because it's like a library. Use, I'm kind of making sure I write this right. Use 18.9 from view i18.9. And now we should be able to use t from here. So we're gonna go const t equals use 18n. And so this t is used to do internationalization. And what you do is basically you created this locals file and it has all these different languages. Like here is English and German and Spanish. And you have these button and you have these kind of YAML files which have structures in them. And then you can refer back to it. And when you change languages, it will automatically show the other versions of it. 
So if we're sticking with you know English, we can do I know intro.dsc. So if we go back into our file here, we have T. So I'm just gonna make another H5 here. And the way you do that is double curly brackets. We have T and then we pass in as a string what we want to see. So in this one, we were looking at that locals file and we want to do intro.dsc. .dsc. Cool. So if we refresh it, see so impinionated byte starter template. So this string is now localized and whenever we change the language, it should show the different versions. And by the way, we have this toggle here and see so you can see all the different languages are showing up as you change it which is awesome. So that's how you do uh, localization. Another really cool thing is you can import markdown in here. So let's say in my by folder, I created a new file called, uh, let's see, info.md. Now this is a markdown file and all markdown should work on here. So I'll say, hello world from markdown. We can even do a um, little, if we wanted to, we can, import in like um, actual snippets of code and have it show correctly. I don't know if I want to do import test from test and then like some maybe some some more JavaScript const b equals test. I don't know. And we can also do links. So if we have uh, hello world and then we can put in HP example.com and now we can import this info.md in here. So to do that, we would have to import it in here. Well, let's see here. Let's see if this just works. Info, so we're gonna import info, we'll call it info from, and I'll capitalize this because I believe this should be capitalized. So I'm gonna call it info. So info from, and I can actually, it has aliases to the source folder. So I'll just go to pages slash by slash info dot MD. And if I did this right, it should save it. I'm gonna refresh it. Cool, so here it actually imported in the markdown. So here's the hello for markdown. Here's our JavaScript syntax highlighting and a link that I made to example.com. And that's all built into here. So that's really, really cool. Uh, another thing I wanna show you is layouts. So this whole time you've been noticing that this default layout's at the bottom and you're probably wondering how you get there. So there's this layouts folder right here and it, we already have three layouts. It's Right now it's set up for default, but what happens if we wanna use this home layout, uh, which is, looks a little different? And we can even change it to uh, H3, let's see, H3 home layout. And to do that, you use this YAML. So at the bottom of all your files, like in this Eric one, I can create this route. And then I use this lang equals YAML. And then I do meta. And then if I do this right, meta. And then I have a layout and I put the, the layout name that I wanna use. In this case, I'm gonna use home. There we go, now it's formatted right. So if I refresh it here, it's cool. So now you can see I have the home layout at the bottom instead of the other layout. But what is if I wanted to create my own layout? So I could do that. So I'm gonna come down here to layouts, create a new file. I'm gonna call it uh, um, top. Let's say I had a, you wanna do a top in here, top.view. And I'm going to put in a, really I don't need, since it's just a layout, maybe I don't even need a script tag, or yep, I don't need a script tab, so I'm just gonna create a template. And, and with this, I'm gonna just put something really stupid, like an H4 menu bar. And that is my new layout. And we should be able to use it now, it's just called, uh, it's just called top. Um, but sometimes it requires you stop and restart the server. So I'm gonna do that real quickly. Bring up this, I'm gonna do v stop server. So it stopped. And now I'm gonna go back into my Eric view file. I'm gonna change this from home. It's just the name, whatever you named it, to top. So now this will appear. And by the way, what it's going to do 
is it just wraps everything inside this where this router view is. So I have to grab this router view. Let's say we put it right there. That's where I want it. Okay, so if this works, I should have my new menu bar here. I guess, yeah, let's see if that works. All right, cool. So here's my menu bar at the top. I have my props receive Eric Hanchet, have my markdown. Uh, I have my custom components. Oh, I didn't even show you Windy CSS. Let me show you that real quickly. So I don't really love this top. I'm gonna go back to home. I'm just gonna put the home layout right here. There it is. And what's, let's say I wanted to use Windy CSS. So I have the Windy CSS Tailwind and Telesense extension installed. It's actually a little bit different than the Tailwind one. It's called the Windy CSS extension. I'm not, a, I'm not super familiar with Windy CSS other than it uses Tailwind. But if I wanted to just say this hello world, I'm gonna add a class here. Now I have all my Tailwind CSS classes I can just look up. So if I wanna do, I don't know, text for XL and then text purple 700 and then I don't know, maybe we add a shadow. Let's say, let's do a, a rounded. Yeah, let's do rounded 2XL. I don't know if this is gonna look right. Cool, so here's hello world, Eric. Um, it's in purple. It's not rounded. Let me see here. Let's do a background text. Let's do BG yellow 700. There we go. So now it's 700. I wonder if I add rounded here if it'll work. Let's do rounded. Okay, so now the sides are rounded. But you can see here, now I've used Windy CSS. Now that's not even all the things that come with this opinionated template, uh, this opinionated framework here. We actually have other things I didn't even get to. It includes, like you can see in this app view, it includes this use head. So if you wanna change the header of the title, name, description, you can change it using this use head. It has just, it has in progress, if you wanna use like progress bars. It has a dark mode, which I kinda of showed you a little bit. So you can change from light and dark mode, that's built in. It has a PWA, so if you wanted to have a progressive web app, but also it has static site generation too. So if you wanted to build this as a static type. So if you look at the script tags, it has this build where it uses a Vite SSG. So I guess we could show that real quickly. So here's my Vite, it's running, I'm gonna stop it. So if I can go npm run build, it's gonna actually build it as a static site generated app, which means we're gonna, it's gonna create a bunch of folders here and it's gonna build all those dynamic routes that we created, in fact. So it has all the HTML files. So if you go look at the dist folder that it created, it actually created all the HTML files, index HTML files. So it's definitely static site generated out of the box, which is pretty awesome. So let's start the Vite server one more time. Uh, I can show you one more thing. This is just so cool. There's just so many things to show. I can't even show them all. But if you go into pages and I have this by, and let's say I wanted to create a dynamic route, um, what's maybe even, even easier to see under high, if you put brackets around it, that means anything you pass in as this route name will be covered by this name here. So this is high. So if I go uh, high here, I change it high and then I don't know, I put Bob. What it's gonna do is it's taking this dynamic route here, Bob, and it's appending it to it. So the way it does this in here, you can see here, it's actually grabbing the router, right? Use router right here. And then from there, it's doing router.back, but it's also, doing this high name, which is from coming from a prop. So it's basically, even though it's coming from a route, it's grabbing it as if it's a prop and then displaying it to the user, which is pretty cool. So if I change this to, I know, Bob123, it shows Bob123 here. So it's a demo of a dynamic route. Cool, so uh, love to hear what you guys think about this. Leave a comment below, uh, I really appreciate it. And if you guys like V, check out some of these other videos. Thanks.